Jason Blevins covers the 76ers at Jay Blevins NBA. Get some more insight on what this team does moving forward. What do we know about Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid and obviously how that impacts everything moving forward for this team, which uh, fought hard last night, Broads, but they come up short against the Portland Trailers. But you know what? Fighting hard is nice. I mean, I think that says something about the coach to be able to keep that team going when you're out Ben Simmons, when you're out Joel Embiid. But that being said, what's left over is not a championship team. And that's this playoff. It's This team was built for the playoffs. Not good. In, this, this team's just not good enough if Joel Embiid's out. Oh, no doubt. I don't expect him to be out long term. We hope not. We'll get an update on that coming up uh, a little bit later. Brett Brown is set to talk to the media. Jason Blevins joins us now. Let's get an update on what he knows about Ben Simmons. And for all intents and purposes, Jay, it seems that Ben Simmons will not see the court again this year. He has left the bubble, correct? He he has left the bubble. Um, He will be getting surgery. Um, Haven't heard if he's gotten it today, but within the next um, couple of days. And uh, it looks like it's going to be about a six-week recovery, which um, means that that would bump pretty close up against the NBA Finals. So barring barring a run that looked really certain to go to the Finals, um, it doesn't seem like they're going to try to ramp him back up to um, game activity uh, this year. So obviously it's a big loss, but let's go uh, first level here and, and look at the matchup. It looks like it's going to happen with Boston. Boston is one team that really gives Ben Simmons a lot of problems. So is losing Ben Simmons against Boston as big of a problem as it might be big picture to go deep in, you know, the playoffs? Yeah, I, I, I agree that it's a, it's a team that's a tough matchup for him and um, somewhat neutralizes what he really does well on, on both ends. So, you know, they don't really have the, Dominant, dominant score. You can make a case that you put him on Jason Tatum, but um, you know that's that's the one team where you, you don't think the matchup changes all that much um, without Ben. What are your thoughts on the way Al Horford has stepped up since being thrown back into the lineup? I thought he's played very well. He did get into some foul trouble yesterday, which limited him to, I believe it was about 22 minutes. But all around, you definitely see a different um, Al Horford ever since that minus 26 in 23-minute game to start the bubble against the Pacers. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I think that's a great point. Um, I think Al has settled into his place on the team, which – which really was uncertain um, early in the season. I think he was uh, he was trying to be gentle, not appear uh, like a sort of a, a looming sort of uh, vet that would second guess what some of the younger stars would do. And and uh, and I think he's really found his place and his voice. So I think I think you're seeing that on the floor. Jason Blevins covers the 76ers uh, at Jay Blevins NBA on Twitter. Uh, realistically, now we're going to get an update on Embiid, I guess, here sh- uh, shortly. Uh, I mean, him coming back out last night, I heard Richardson say last night post game, like the me- the messaging seems to be that Embiid is going to be okay. But realistically, whether he is fine, not fine, or whatever, do you anticipate seeing much more of him? I wouldn't play him again, no. This is really, the only benefit to having him on the floor right now before the beginning of the first round is to get him – many, many reps with double teams thrown at him. And you want to see double teams from all angles and force him to sort of get that, get that vision. But, um, you know, they've, they've got a back-to-back coming up and then they've got a final game. So, you know, are you going to play him? And let's say he's totally fine today. Let's say it was just a complete simple rolled ankle and he wakes up today fine. You know, maybe you pay, play him in one of those back-to-back, the second back-to-back game. Uh, limited minutes, but I think the bigger the bigger opportunity here is knowing that your seating is pretty much what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, give the other guys some some oxygen to um, to breathe because I think what you saw last night was um, guys that just don't get a lot of touches and um, don't get a lot of shot clock to work with. 
uh, kind of got some time to just do their thing. And you saw sort of a, a more conventional basketball team um, once they kind of knew he was not going to return. Yeah, I mean, the one, I guess, question, and, and you know, I'll, I'll see what you think about this, is the how do you balance, and Bede has had all sorts of injuries, yet some of the problems has been his cardio and, you know, yeah. balance him not playing that much and then having him basically not play from now until, I mean, the NBA playoffs starts the 17th. That's still over a week from now. It is. So, I mean, you have, you have practices, you have um, bikes, you, you do, you have pools, you do everything you can do to keep him um, in somewhat shape. You don't want him, uh, obviously, just on the trainer's table for two hours and then go back to the hotel and play FIFA. That's what you don't want, to your point. Um, but, you know, what you, what you saw a few days ago from Joel was he was back to that sort of flying around, um, trying to block every shot, you know, falling on the ground a lot. And um, you don't want him second-guessing his ankle as he's sort of flying around. You just don't want that because that's, that's how injuries do occur when you're sort of thinking about something um, and you're caught in between playing loose and, and thinking about your, your potential injuries. So I don't know. It, it, this is why these coaches um, – and medical staff get paid um, so much money, and, and it's time for them to earn that money and find that balance. You know, it's, it's what, a week away now? Um, so deliver him in shape a week from now. <laughs> what, else, yeah. what else can we say? <laughs> you know? What do you think that this playoff run means for Brett Brown at this point? You lose Ben Simmons, now Joel Bede's probably not going to, you know, see much time from now until the postseason, and does he get the benefit of the doubt because here's a postseason where he doesn't have a major player like Ben Simmons? And then you also have to factor in because of COVID-19, our team's going to be willing to pay out his contract, buy him out, and then pay a whole new coach as well. How do you think this plays out for Brett Brown if it doesn't go as planned and there's no deep run? Oh, I think it's deep run or, or they'll be trying something new. Um, pretty, 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 Pretty simple. I think it's, you know, they go to the conference finals, deliver a, a really um, surprising performance, uh, or um, or he'll be looking for something new, new challenges. And I think um, the franchise will be looking for a new voice um, in that locker room. And, um, and then, you know, long before they ever think to uh, break up their their young core, they're going to look to see if a new voice can sort of make things work. So I I think they would have to really shock some people uh, for him to um, be back. Yeah, and I guess uh, and, and and by the way, I agree with you. I mean, as much as uh, I, I think that um, you know he's been dealt kind of some wild hands, the three different GM. I mean, we, we can go through all that, but does the COVID play any role here? That they don't want to pay two coaches, they might play in a bubble again next year. I mean, it it might it it shouldn't, and and in in Brett Brown, the fans, I think. He has executed um, really well to the uh, mission that he's been given most of the years. So, if you look at when they when they really wanted to develop assets, develop young guys, um, create a carousel of players to look at them, he 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 absolutely executed on that. Got them top picks and got them 23, 25 players per season to to look at, try out. And then when they were ready to win, he's been a you know sixty percent um, winning head coach since since they sort of turned that page. So I don't think it's an indictment on him and his performance to say that this this is kind of the year that um, you know there aren't there aren't a lot of excuses now. If it's a financial decision um, because of revenue, then I don't think you have a stable ownership group in the first place because. You know, if five million dollars, or, or you know, I don't think he's getting paid five million, but you know, if, if five or five or ten million dollars over the next few years is the difference between you um, 
taking that next step or not, then I don't, I don't know that you are in a stable position as an organization. I would have to agree. What are your thoughts on some of Brett's rotations? I know Alec Burks has been definitely making some noise. Do you think that he should be the first guy off the bench at times you've been seeing for Con Corkma? So where do you think Alec Burks is now that he's been scoring the, uh, the ball lately? If he continues to hit three-pointers at the clip, he's, he's hitting them. Right. Um, I mean, my opinion hasn't changed over the last week. You know, he's put up some numbers, but um, when you look at the body of work and, and, and his career, he's he's going to thrive when you give him the ball with plenty of shot clock and let him operate, which is what they did last night. So, you know, that's a real that's a real opportunity for him over the next few games to really get, get some eyeballs and, and some shot clock and, and some dribbles to, uh, to create. Now, um, under normal circumstances, do I think he's a net, you know, a positive in the playoffs? Um, I just think it's very situational. You know, it's yeah. it's a uh, it's very situational. <laughs> Well, and then it kind of leads me to this is, have we learned anything about the rotations in this team in the bubble? So I think I think one thing we've learned um, by virtue of not having it is Glenn Robinson the third is it plays a, cr- a critical role um, and it hurt to not have him. Um, I think what um, what you've learned is that Shake Milton is um, an upside player who um, can be rattled by certain types of guards. Um, and um, and I think there, that there are a lot of positives about Tobias Harris's quiet, quiet leadership and quiet game. I think we've learned that. He's, he's really put up some pretty good, good games without a lot of fanfare. Um, and then last night, Josh Richardson, with a, with a conventional lineup, not having to feed the post, not having to play off, off of Ben Simmons, uh, was really able to do some nice things. So uh, those are the things I would, I would point to as being um, lessons. All right, well, uh, tomorrow, 4.30 uh, on 97.3 ESPN. I don't know how much more of these games have a lot of meaning for the Sixers. It looked like they're kind of locked into that sixth spot. It looks like Boston is likely going to be locked into the three spot, and that will be your first-round matchup uh, for the most part. Uh, and, and you wrote a piece this weekend about Joel Embiid and, and you know his ability to kind of you know see the double teams. and that. So I'll ask you this. Can the Sixers still make a deep, playoff run, a championship run, running through Joel Embiid? Um, I, do, I do think so. I, I think that is um, that is something that over the course of a seven-game series, uh, he will get to be able to uh, see more and more of. You know, one team is only going to have so many different ways to double him, and... Uh, I think it's something he can adjust to throughout a seven-game series versus uh, playing a different opponent each night. Uh, I do think it creates a lot of things for other uh, other players in the team. So, but again, I I am definitely a ones and fives guy. So I'm not a. Uh, I believe in the the uh, importance of the point guard in the center on, on both ends. So, uh, <laughs> I do think that. It is something that is unique, and they have a, a special advantage against uh, some of the teams that are just constructed to stop your smaller five-out type teams. All right, uh, the season continues tomorrow. Looking forward to uh, see how Joel's uh, you know ankle is when uh, Brett talks in about fifteen minutes. Jay will be on that call. If there's any update, he'll let us know at Jay Blevins NBA for more. And of course, uh, he like all guests appear via the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. Jay, take care, man. Thank you.